Yeah, this is the first big box expansion called Under the Dark Waves. Uh, adds a bunch of new characters, some new locations. Uh, generally more content, which is what expansion should be doing. Um, I just said icon. Uh, not mix the event cards into the encounter deck. So you're going to get a bunch of different stuff. There's two new locations. Uh, there's some extra new stuff. There's some travel routes. Uh, we got eight new investigators to play as. Uh, four more scenarios. Bunch of new cards to go with all that stuff. Um, and like the first video for the base game is, um, I'll go through the investigator cards. I'll go through like the items and the spells and stuff like that. Um, but I'm not going to go through every individual, like, event and encounter, uh, like, all these ar archive cards and stuff like that. Because they have a, one, because they have a ton of text on them, and if I go through every single card, this is going to be a super long-ass video, especially if I sit there and read every one. Two is because it's spoilers. Uh, this game is very story-driven, um... So I don't want to sit there and go through and spoil everything for you. I'd rather, if you're going to play the game, you know, you can buy it and play it. But at least I'll show off like one or two cards so you can kind of see what they are. But again, I'm not going to read through all of them. If it's something you would be interested in, seeing all the different cards, seeing every piece of content, let me know in the comments. And then maybe I can make one of those at some point. Um, yeah, she got two new... Uh, Kyle's just kind of skim, like I always got to skim through the book a little bit. Some mysteries. So we have new type of card. We have terror icons. Go with all the rest of our nastiness that's going after us. Add some different effects there. Some new keywords. Uh, attachments, counter abilities, double sided cards, event decks. Just a bunch of different stuff for the game. Uh, there's some game modes, there's some challenging, in inevitable modes. And then your quick reference guide. Two couple different route types. Uh, and what the new stuff is. And there's all the awesome people that worked on the game. Alright, so let's actually just jump in and look at some of this stuff. So first off, we have the Innsmouth Village, which has First National Grocery, Innsmouth Jail, and the Esoteric Order of Daigon. We flip that one over, we're going to get Central Kingsport. So we have Neil's Curiosity Shop, the Hall School, and the Congressional Hospital. A couple of new locations there. And we're also going to get Kingsport Harbor. So you have North Point Lighthouse, Roping Anchor, and Sir Emerius' House. On the flip side, we get Ainsmouth Shore. So it's Falcon Point, Marsh Refinery, and Gilman House. So that's a four brand new locations. Uh, so basically... So it's sort of more or less you can play as either you're doing the in Innsmouth extra stuff or you're doing the Harbor extra, the Kingsport extra stuff um, is what you're getting. So it's sort of like two different areas. Alright, let's look at our brand new investigators. Start off here, good old Ash Can Pete, the Drifter. Got seven health, five uh, brain. Got a little dog Duke there. Like the other video, I'm not gonna read through every single part of this again. It's just it would take me, it would take me too long to sit here and read all of this. I mean, I can hold it up and pause the video, read it, but oh, but he's a survivor type. Uh, got a couple different stuff. Uh, we have Carlson Sinclair, the butler, who's six and six. Got pretty at down the row stats. Uh, he's a seeker and a survivor. Let's see if I can adjust this. 
There we go. A little bit better. Trying a new lighting system, so apologize for some of the odd glares and everything. Oh, we got Charlie King, the politician. Get some extra stuff with money. Uh, you can see that he has very low health, but he has lots of brain power. He has sanity. Um, definitely, he's going to get some stuff done that way. He's a rogue and a seeker, and the rogue says, Charlie has a way with people. A few careful words, and you can find your way through most obstacles and have a helpful assistant on hand. All about being a politician and speaking his way through stuff. So now we have Father Mateo, the priest. The mystic and a guardian. We got Patrice Hathaway, the violinist. The mystic and a seeker. And they like recommend when you play this multiple people is try and pick some different class points. We got Silas Marsh, the sailor, who goes great with the king's port. You can see he has lots of health. He's a survivor and a rogue. As a rogue, it says Silas Lineage shares a dark connection with the creatures of the mythos. You have unparalleled ability to predict and control the monsters that plague you. Definitely interesting. We got Stella Clark, the letter carrier. He's just a survivor. And finally, we have Zoe Samaras, the chef, who has a bloody knife. Uh, and so her stats are a little, a little differentiating. Oops. And she's a guardian and a mystic. Alright, then we got a couple of stories. So we have our, our scenarios. We have the Tyrants of Ruin. With Mother Hydra and Father Dagon. It's so gonna show all your different areas. And now this is kind of... Oop, and I knocked it over. You need how the map works on here. So you're gonna have some of your original town places here. If they're bridge and forest uh, walkways and stuff. Uh, there you have on the edge here, they have these pathways that connect to each other. So you can leave through one or the other and go to Ainsmouth Village. Or you can take the port and go to the other port. Uh, so it's kind of a different way to get around. And then up here is actually Devil's Reef, which is a special area. Um, it shows all your different stuff you're going to get. More Codex cards. Alright, then for something a little bit different, we have the Pale Lantern. A creepy party. The Lantern Club. And you get the same thing there. They're going to have like... This is where you're going to get the King's Port. And a couple different ways. So they connect that way. The pathways connect that way. There's a strange house over here. This is kind of a neat way to add some extra content. We're going to get... If equals children. The giant... Uh, Snow monster. This one actually has two different locations that are separate, which is kind of cool. Just some different ways to get around. And finally, we have the Dreams of Rayleigh. The Dreams of Rayleigh, sorry. And that just actually has four, four of the regular ones. It doesn't have any of the special new areas, which is kind of cool because so you get some different stuff. Um, but here it says, set aside King's Mouth and King Port Neighbors, Tile Hoods, and Events. So it probably means they're going to come up at some point. Like something's probably going to open up like a realm to those. Uh, and now let's look at those tiles here quick, since we didn't do those. So we're going to get, oops. going to get the Devil's Reef. And on the opposite of that is a strange high house. So they're going to be used kind of Kingsport and um, Ainsmouth. They're going to be used one of those at a time. But then we're going to have our different locations. So we have our boats for harbor. And we have our crossroads. 
And then actually you're going to get a bunch of those. And then we're going to have the railroad. We got four railroads. And on the back it's just more driving path or boats depending on which ones they are. Just some other different ways to travel between locations. It's definitely cool. Uh, before we get to any of the cards, we're going to look at some of the tokens here. So, we got all our new character tokens. For all the different new investigators. We need a handful of all the new monster ones. We have small ones and large ones. Oop. And we got a bunch more new token, bunch of extra tokens uh, for Doom and Clues, just in case you needed more. And a few extra, like, regular tokens to throw in the bag with different symbols on them for various things. Some bag ones. Another blank one. Just some more of the bigger ones. Just, yep. So why not add some more bad stuff in there? And of course, a couple for these guys. You can see, we got a bunch of different ones. I have a little container here. Alright. Let's look at some other cards. We're going to look at the item cards. and Well, the personal investigator cards first. And then we'll get into all the different extra ones. So start off with good old Ashcan Pete the Drifter. And he's gonna get his Duke, his faithful hound. This guy a guitar. He's got a talent for wanderer. And then now we have the butler, Carlson Sinclair. Going to have anticipation as you wish. Prepared for anything. And oh, this is now Charlie King, the politician. He's going to get an ally himself, Bonnie Walsh, his faithful assistant. And call in some favors, get some. Kind of a job right away. A voice of authority. Father Mikhail, the priest. Gets a whole back darkness. Of course he gets some holy water. And Signum Crusus. And then if we jump into... Patrice Hathaway, the violinist. Got captivating melody. Because that's how I want to fight that big giant thing. Is, uh, the violinist to come rescue me. Um, the ominous dreams. And then she's got her signature violin. And then. she got a special card here. So this is called The Watcher. It's a condition. It's also a monster. It's an unholy presence. Um, I think you can flip it to the other side. It spawns at her side. So that's kind of interesting. If she gets a special monster card. Then we have Silas Marsh. It's an adventurous spirit. Get a fishing net, and then oh, a flannel shirt. Cause you know why not make sure the guy has a shirt on. Uh, Stella Clark, the letter carrier. It's called by the mists. It's got a delivery truck and snow nor rain. And then finally, we have Zoe Samaras, the chef. And get her chef's knife. And then she can enchant her weapon. And she's also got 
Zoe's Cross. So these are all your signatures. Some of them they start with, some are optional. Um, they can choose to get them or choose not to get them. Or I have to choose which ones to get. Alright, so we're going to have a couple of allies here. So allies are blue cards. These are items that you can get throughout the game. So we have Prudence Douglas, the Promagic Occultist. And Turing Gaharaba, the Visiting Lecturer. We're going to get some common items. Such as the Baseball Bat. The Encyclopedia. I love this one. Ground Pepper. Instead of calling it, you know, dirt. Um, and then Healing Elixir. And then we got a couple of spells. So not as many of this as there are in the base set for uh, items. But that's fine because it's in Spanker. It's just to add some stuff. Uh, but we're also going to get Astral Projection. And then Hunter's Insight. But those are ones, like, you set aside, you can go to, like, a store and buy. Uh, and then we have the special orange ones, which are, like, event kind of items and stuff. So there are a bunch of different things here. So we're going to get Death, the tarot card. Uh, the Evans Hall Journal. So here we have a talent. Eye for appraisal. Kingsport reputation. So it's probably one you can only use in Kingsport. Uh, the Four of Cups Tarot card. Friend of a Friend. The Golden Crown. A Harpoon. A Hotel Porter. An ally called Insuk, Keeper of Paths. Kerosene. Uh, another ally, that Lonnie Ritter, the feisty mechanic. We have a lucky coin. Stranger's contract. Yeah, that doesn't seem sketchy at all. And finally, we have Twisted Flesh. It's probably not one you maybe want. But you might get it. Um, Alright, so a couple other things we got before we get to some items. We have a brand new condition, so there's a bunch of these. So this is Tainted. This bad thing that can kind of happen to you. And then we have two new Dark Packs. Which are... Either Grim Spectre, which is a phantom that's following you. Or a Virtuant Plague. Kind of like that, like the mystery of what one you're going to get. Alright, and then we got a bunch of monsters. So the monsters all have a black side. Just kind of just showing where they spawn at, how they move. And then the other side, which is the one I'll show off, which is the white side. Uh, which is the one that um, has all the stats and stuff on there. So we have... Terrified Wanderer, a Dreaming Human. We got a couple of those. We have a Swooping Scavenger, which is a Bakahi. Like bird demons. Uh, the Prowling Abductor, a Human Occultist. A couple of those. We have a Pale Lord, which is a Moon Beast. Icebound Captive, Human Thrall. Couple of those. A hovering Bakahi. You know, a little bit closer look at one of those. Uh, a guardian beast, a Shakang Saboteur. Which is a massive, so he attacks everybody. Uh, Frenzied Hunter, which is a deep one, which are like the water creatures. Uh, Feasting Master, which is a moon beast. And Trance Hyper. Hybrid, Dreaming Deep One, en Enraged Dreamer, a Dreaming Human, a couple of those, a Dread Shadow, a Shatank Sevator, 
D Clan Pierce, a human cultist. That sounds very specific on who he is. A cruel slaver, another moon beast. Uh, Cantor of Relay, star spawn. Uh, a cursed Salmon Bullist, Dreaming Human. And we got two of those. Alright, so that is all of our tiny cards. Alright, then we have our, uh, now we're getting into our spoilery cards, so just a little heads up there. Um, so these are your different locations. These are, uh, some old, some new, so I have, like, Kingsport Harbor and Angel Village, um, which are all new ones, but we also had Southside, Rivertown, Mistletonic. Because these are all ones related to the campaign, so if you're playing one of the scenarios, they're going to use these locations. And these would be the ones that will show their different encounters down there. So if you're playing like Dreams of Relay, you're going to use this set. Or if you're using... I guess these are all Dreams of Relay uh, for this particular set. Um, but yeah, then this will be like shot for different areas. So if we're in the Central Kings part, you have to draw this card for that uh, event. Or you know, event encounter. It'll tell you what to do on here, and it'll give you different things. Each one has different effects. Uh, some have more symbols than the other. Uh, different tests. Checking, like, different things. Um, yeah, but it's really fun, because it gives you all these different random stuff for each one. Uh, of what you are having to do. So then we probably have all the other event ones over here. Yeah. And sorted weird in the box. Yeah, so here's some more of those. It's just 32 of them. So that's definitely fun. 32 different cards you're going to have to draw. I don't know how many you're going to generally draw per game. Um, but the fact is you have 32 different cards. Means that you could probably play each scenario like I'd say two or three times. And get different results every time. Because even if you get the... Same card, you might not be in the same location each time. So then you're just going to have for the other events, it's going to go through the same areas. Uh, depending on what, like this one has added uptown in there. This one added downtown, south side. Uh, so yep, just your different events down there. It's 24 for Equipus Children. Um, 24 for the Pale Lantern. And 24 for Tyrants of Ruin. So that's just big giant stack of all these brand new encounter cards. Um, gonna get a bunch more of the other ones with the backs on them. Just a few more for each one. And these are just your general location cards. So they're for every single area in the game. A couple for each. Um, the new travel routes. So there's a little bit more for that. Um, and there's some for the strange high house. Um, and Devil's Reef. Bunch more for each of the new areas like Kingport, Ainsmouth, and the Shore. And these are just other ones. They're similar things. They're going to have the same type of stuff. Um, but if you're, if you're interacting at that area, this is what's going on. Instead of it being an encounter, like necessarily something uh, bad or plot related, these are just, you know, you're talking to the people in town trying to find out what's going on or search for clues as to what you should be doing next but i love that they add some uh new ones for the old sets too so that way at least takes hey, here's some extra bonus for playing those all right then we also have some special encounter decks for different stuff and these are just ones that like kind of like alternate area things you can go to so this is visions of the moon and there's going to be 12 of those. A lot of different things when you have to draw these depending on what scenario you're playing. Each one has one different deck. Um, and if you draw these, they have different effects based on how much Doom is around. Um, we have Feeding Frenzy, which has... Oh. Has some deep ones on the back. We get the Frozen City. Some people in frost. So I think there's just the three of them instead of four. So one of them must not, one of the scenarios must not include those. Probably the uh, one that has the more, 
things. Uh, and then we're going to get our new headlines. Um, so headlines are various parts. I love the fact that on these, though, they just continue the numbers. So instead of it being like, oh, it's this set, number one, they don't have to try and explain to you what set. They can just tell you, hey, pull set, pull card number 12. And it's not, oh, pull card 12 from this set or pull card 12 from this set. They just continue the numbers along. But we got a couple more different headlines, which are usually bad stuff that's going to happen to you. Um, and then the last final big giant chip deck here. Um... These are the rest of your encounters and stuff, your uh, codex cards that will come through. And you saw in some of the start, or uh, some of the decks here, not the decks, the scenario cards. Uh, so like this one for Dreams of Wrath, they'll say start with card number 1, 106, and 107. So card 1's from the base set, 106 and 107 for this. And it also says uh, shuffle cards 117 through 120 and set them aside. So that's where you find these cards in here. So here's 106. It starts off that uh, particular story. And it helps you. And then the next one's 107. Um, and then it's how you find out how your story goes. Because again. It, like I said in the first video. You don't know what your actual story is going to be. Um, until you start playing. And you get some like this. It'll. Uh, it's going to do some different stuff. Add Innsmouth Shore and Village to the game. Add those two. There's a couple different ones like that. Uh, yeah, so this, this is basically what changes up the game. So you're finding out how you're, how you're supposed to win. Um, and what's coming at you. You get like number 104 here is the Wendigo. It's a spirit thrall. So you get a big giant monster to fight. Or we get Equitha himself, or itself. 8 plus health, minus 3 to attacking it. Uh, so here's going to be some of the bad guys for the uh, Lantern. So the Bloodless Man. And we also have the Pale Lantern. It's just a giant item. Has some other effects on the back. Uh, you got a headdress. You got a Deep One Relic. Wave Worn Idol. Awakened Mantle. Interesting stuff there. And then finally, the big bosses of the game. Which we have... Mother Hydra. And Father Dagon. These are the last two that the like, big bosses are on the cover and everything. There, there's stacks. Massive, Elite 3, Pursuit. It might not seem so terrible, maybe compared to some of the other ones. Except for, I think, you're probably going to have to fight them at the same time. Um... Which is what would make them terrifying. Alright. So again, I didn't want to go through all them cards and show off every single thing. Because I don't want to spoil everything for you if you want to buy the game. Um, but yeah, if it's something you're interested, let me know. I'll just maybe, I can always do a video showing off all of them. Um, take a little bit longer to go through. I don't know if I'll read through every single card. I might just have to sit there and show them. Because it might take me forever. I might round a voice reading through all of them. Because there's... You know, you try reading it, little tiny paragraphs on every one of these cards and see how much voice you have left. Uh -huh. But, you know, that's what we got. So, yeah, that's uh, the second expansion, or the first ex big box expansion. There's uh, more coming. Uh, check out the base game if you want some more information on that. Uh, see you guys later. Bye.